Assalamu alaikum. Have you ever noticed that even some uh, foreigners living in English speaking countries like the USA or UK have trouble with pronunciation? You know why? Because they probably don't know the willpower technique. That's why. Will stands for write, imitate, and listen. Here, imitation is the most important part, and it means copying something that a native speaker is saying exactly. In other words, you train your mouth with your ears. Did you know that if you mimic someone's accent, you will be able to better understand what they say? Famous playwright George Bernard Shaw explains the connection between learning and imitation as such. Imitation is not just the sincerest form of flattery, it is the sincerest form of learning. This is what psychologists at the UK's University of Manchester and Holland's Radboud University discovered in a study in 2010. The results showed that learning through imitation, imitating the person you are talking to or listening to in an audio or video, helps your speech comprehension. Imitation speeds up learning. In the 1970s, American psychologist Andrew Ann Meltzoff identified so-called social learning where people or animals observe and then copy their companions. Imitation accelerates learning and multiplies learning opportunities, he noted. It is faster than individual discovery and safer than learning by trial and error. How to imitate the willpower technique. First and foremost, you need to choose material to work with. It can be any audio or video with text or subtitles such as audiobooks, movies, TV series, songs, speech, you name it. For me, book is the easiest and most effective of all and that's why we are going to use books. Now that we have chosen our material, all we have to do is take three steps. One, write. We need to write down the new words from a chapter just for reference. We don't have to learn them by heart or anything. We don't have to memorize them. 2. Imitate. When we listen to the audio, we have to copy the, the pause and the pitch, the uh, level of the reader's voice. Is it high or low? Is it loud or quiet? And tempo. Is the reader saying things fast? Or is he saying them slowly? So it's about speed. Okay, and third step in the willpower technique is listening. After uh, going through the first two steps, you need to listen to the same chapter uh, while doing chores, you know, going through your daily routine, such as uh, doing chores, going somewhere, or waiting for something, to learn it deeply, to learn the material deeply. All right, I have prepared an elementary, intermediate, and native level storybooks for you to show you exactly how you can use the willpower technique. Here is an elementary story titled Dante Speak. I love its audio because the reader has a really deep voice and he pronounces each word clearly. Okay, first we need to write down the new words. I think we don't have to do that here as it is a very easy story, so we'll move on to imitation. As you can see, I have given background color to some of the words and phrases to show you the changes in the reader's voice. It's not really complete, but it's better than nothing. Let's listen to a sentence and imitate the reader. Remember, when imitating, you have to pay attention to your pause, pitch, and tempo. Let's go. Penguin Readers, Level 2 Dante's Peak Chapter 1 Harry Dalton Loved Volcanoes Harry Dalton loved volcanoes. And pay attention to volcanoes where K is where the voice goes up. It's the high pitch part of the of the word. You shouldn't say volcanoes, but volcanoes. Now let's try the second sentence. He had the most dangerous and exciting job in the world. 
he had the most dangerous and exciting job in the world. You see the pauses between had and the and dangerous and 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 exciting job and in? You have to pay close attention to those. Pauses are important. He was a scientist. He was a scientist. Uh, as you can see, the whole thing is said in one breath. Not he was a scientist, but he was a scientist. There is no pause. And he wanted to understand volcanoes. And he wanted to understand volcanoes. So the idea is you just keep going like this by paying very close attention to the pitch, the pause, and the tempo. And you have to go up where the reader goes up, and you have to go down where he goes down, and you have to pause where uh, there is a pause. Now, I will play the audio, and your job is to copy the reader just like I did. All right? You can pause the video and try to copy. Volcanoes kill people, he said. When we understand volcanoes, we can tell people this mountain is going to explode, and then they can move away. He flew round the world. Was a volcano ready to explode? Harry Dalton was there. That's it for this book, but remember to listen to the chapter again to learn the pronunciation of the reader deeply. It's time to try an intermediate story titled Cinderella Man. Do you want to see magic? I'll show you one. If you are a true intermediate learner, you probably don't know these words. But even if you do, you might find these sentences hard to translate, right? Hit the like button if what I said was right. Now, it's time to imitate. Let's listen. Chapter 1. A Lucky Man Madison Square Garden, New York, November 30th. 1928. There were 19,000 boxing supporters around the center ring in Madison Square Garden. Chapter 1. A Lucky Man. Madison Square Garden, New York, November 30th, 1928. There were 19,000 boxing supporters around the center ring in Madison Square Garden. Pay attention to how two, three words are said together. They're, they're joined and they sound like just one word. That makes you sound like a native speaker. And most people cannot do that. They leave pauses where they shouldn't. Uh, and they cannot really put two or three words together and say it in one breath. Or they just don't do it uh, because they don't know it. But now you do. So make sure you do this. And most were waiting for just one thing, for one fighter to murder another. And most were waiting for just one thing, for one fighter to murder another. Now, I'm going to play the audio and your job is to try to copy the reader as much as possible. Okay? Pay attention to the pitch, the pause and the tempo. Tonight, they were waiting for Gerald Tuffy Griffiths, the terror from out west to destroy New Jersey's Jim Braddock. Last but not least, we have a native level book titled The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And I chose this book over other books as it teaches personal development strategies through a made up story. That's why it's very easy to remember. And you well know that there is no need to learn anything if you cannot remember what you have learned. All right, let's move on to the story. Remember, first we need to write down the new words. And I can tell you which words are new for you if you are an advanced English learner. So here you probably don't know. Yeah, that's it. If you are an upper intermediate learner, you might not know these words. Uh, but everything else uh, should be uh, 
pretty understandable for you. Okay, so we got the words. As you can see here, uh, most sentences are they're set together and it's pretty fast. It's much faster than the previous stories. Let's listen to it. The monk who sold his Ferrari, a spiritual fable about fulfilling your dreams and reaching your destiny. Read by Robin S. Sharma. The wake up call. He collapsed right in the middle of a packed courtroom. He collapsed right in the middle of a packed courtroom. He was one of this country's most distinguished trial lawyers. He was one of this country's most distinguished trial lawyers. He was also a man well known for the $3,000 Italian suits which draped his well fed frame. He was also a man well known for the $3,000 Italian suits which draped his well-fed frame. You know what? Here's what you can do. You can exaggerate the parts where you have to go up. You can exaggerate and you can go higher than normal. Like he collapsed. Uh, he collapsed right in the middle of a packed courtroom. As for his remarkable string of legal victories, I simply stood there. I simply stood there. Have you noticed here in this part, the person is being emotional. He's not just saying, I simply stood there. He said, I simply stood there. Now, I'm not going to imitate through the rest of the text. I want to leave it up to you. Paralyzed by the shock of what I just witnessed, the great Julian Mantle had been reduced to a victim and was now squirming on the ground like a helpless infant, shaking and shivering like a maniac. Remember, after imitating, you have to listen to the story again, but you don't have to imitate this time. You can just listen to it and enjoy it, but you will be paying very close attention to some things that you have never ever paid attention to before. And that will help you improve your pronunciation and take it to the next level. All right, I hope you learned something useful from this. Feel free to share this with friends. If you have any ideas for my next videos, Comment on the bottom and subscribe to see more awesome videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.